What's good, family? Um, just want to have something on my mind I want to talk about is um, be careful. Be careful of a victim mentality. Be careful of a victim mentality. Because sometimes with a victim mentality, like sometimes to be comfortable in that victim place, your ego, and it's kind of backwards that your ego will get big when you're a victim. Because your ego will, will try to defend you. Your ego, its job is kind of really to protect you. But your ego, ego will make you stagnant. Like your ego will be like, not me. It's their fault. That's their ego. Like I look back on like uh, failed relationships, failed marriages, um... And this is not directed toward anybody. I've been on the, the earth 40 years. I've dated several women, been married more than once. This is like all these things combined to help me put together these thoughts. But I'm not a victim to any relationship. And I've been through some fucked up relationships. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not a victim of the relationship because I stayed. Because when the red flags was being waved, I made excuses for that person. And I made excuses for that person so I could stay. Because it had to make sense. Because if it didn't make sense, then something's wrong with me. So I had to figure out a way to make sense of their bullshit so I could stay. And that's dangerous. Oh my God, that's, that's, that's very dangerous. Like if you're going to be honest with anybody, let it be you. At least be honest with yourself. Like I'm to a place now where like honesty with me is like so important because if I'm not honest with me, then I don't have the ability to grow. And in any relationship that I was in, when I felt like I was being mistreated, taken for granted, not being seen and appreciated, I had to say it was my fault. I have to own that to move forward, to not allow that to happen again. Because when those things were happening, the door never moved location. Like at your house where you live, your door ain't move. Your door is in the same place it's always been. Just like you walk in it, you can walk out of it. I could have walked out, but I stayed and I made excuses for myself. I made excuses for that person so that I can stay. But one thing that changed my life is this one word, codependency. When I learned about codependency, it changed everything. Codependency is almost like an addiction to people um, coming from like childhood trauma. Um, and first off, I want to say I love my mother. I love her dearly. But, you know, I was coming up in a household. My mother dealt with drug addiction and my mother has mental issue, issues. Um, my mother diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I'm diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder. So like coming from a place where I'm the eldest in my household and me consistently playing Superman to my mother, always taking care of my mother, focusing on other people more than I focus on myself and coming from a space of never feeling safe. Because when I was a kid, I never felt safe. Like, I mean, I've been, in, I, w I was like fighting grown men at the age of 15, 16 years old. Like men, like my mother's husband come in the house high on drugs. Like I've been in fist fights with him more than once. Um, I never felt safe. I never really felt like my mother or my father played a part to protect me. I learned at a very young age that I had to protect myself at a very young age. I'm talking like, like middle school, 12, 13. I knew like, yo, Nobody's coming to rescue me. That these people at that time in my life, my parents did not value me at that time in my life. And I don't hate them and I don't resent them. 
But that was the reality of the situation. But what happens is them showing me through their actions that they don't value me. Also, the issues that my mother had and me being so young, having to cater to her and her issues and me having to constantly play Superman to her and try to protect her from herself or protect my siblings from some of her actions. I learned that I feel like I have to take care of other people and I always put people before me. So the trend, the trend started when I was a, a child. The trend started by feeling like I had to do things to to take care of other people to get love in return. Because, be, like I said, I didn't feel value from my parents. So if I didn't feel value from my parents, when you when you're in the action of saving a person in that instance, they're very grateful. They're thank you, and you know what I'm saying I appreciate it. Like so, it's like I constantly have to do something to get some kind of level of approval. And my life played out. My life was stuck right there for a very long time. Almost every woman I would get into a relationship had serious issues. And nothing against them because I had a serious issue to be there. So it's not pointing the finger. It's the reality of the situation. But with that being said, it's a cycle. My relationship with my mother set the tone for every woman that I ever dealt with. Your first girlfriend is your mother. Your relationship with your mother sets the tone for every woman that you deal with going further. So like you got to look back at your history because if you're in relationships and they're not going right, look back at your history when you was a child and see if you're stuck in a cycle. And one thing that I realized was because I didn't get value, because I didn't feel safe, I only felt value when I was doing something for somebody. Then it came back to me as like the person being grateful in that moment. But if they don't truly value you, that that soon goes away. You have to continue to do an action. And what I realized too is when you are you you should be valued just for being you. You don't have to be good at anything. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to put on your cape and save nobody. You are valuable and you are worthy right now. Right now. And you should feel valuable and worthy right now because your heart is beating, because you're alive right now. That's it. That's it. And that's a place you need to be first. You need to be there first. Like before you even go into a relationship, like I know that I did not handle this situation from childhood because I wasn't aware for one. But if I would have handled it, if I would have figured it out a long time ago, then the cycle would have stopped. Because I, when I get in a relationship with, with somebody who shows me toxic traits, the same toxic traits my mother showed me when I was a kid, I'd be like, whoa, that ain't what's up. But if my relationship with my mother was toxic, every time I would come to my mother with an issue, I say, Mom, why you let this dude come in the house? He high and you six years clean and you let him come in, like threaten your sobriety. Like what, what? what's going on? I can't fucking do nothing right. You are. She met me with that every time. Every time I'm worried about her well-being. She cursing me out. So. At a young age, I learned that my value, this woman don't value me. And at that time, she probably didn't value herself. Like, look at the reaction. That's self-esteem. That's a serious issue with self-esteem there. But look at that. That means I was taught at a young age that when I speak how I feel, I'm going to be met with adversity. That means I'm afraid to speak up. I stay in situations, in relationships that I'm, I could be mistreated and I might not even feel comfortable speaking up. Or you get to the point where you put up with so much shit that you blow up. But you blow up because you kept piling on different shit because you didn't feel adequate. You didn't feel worthy. 
You didn't have enough love in yourself to speak up for yourself. Now imagine this. I can speak up for her. I can put myself in harm's way and fight grown men for her. But I feel uncomfortable speaking up for me. The validation would come from her and me saving her. But when it came for me, because I didn't, I didn't feel value for myself because I believe what they showed me, then I wouldn't say nothing. And I would get to my breaking point to the point I'll be flipping out because so much shit had happened over time that I didn't speak on. Then that straw that broke the, the camel's back and the camel was fucking losing their mind. So like, you got to look at these traits, look at these cycles, look at your relationships from childhood. And one thing that I realized too is I kept trying to save people and make people life better. Cause the realization that hit me here recently is that's what I always wanted. I always wanted somebody to save me. I always wanted to somebody to look at what I was going through and be like, are you okay? Can I help you? And really help me and really give a fuck. Cause I think that's where it came from. I just felt like nobody gave a fuck for so long that I would break my back for another person just so they could see me. Cause I didn't feel like I had value. I feel like I had to do something to be seen. And I was trying to save people because in actuality, I wanted to be saved myself. I wanted somebody to jump in and be like, yeah, you not treated right. And yeah, this isn't right. And yeah, we're going to fix this. And I'm, I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to show you love. I'm going to lift you up. But I'm too focused lifting other people up. And at the same time, I'm in turmoil. I'm unhappy. I'm in places I'm not supposed to be in. I'm dealing with things I'm not supposed to be dealing with. I'm with women I'm not supposed to be involved with. Because to save somebody, something got to be wrong. So I'm attracted to women with toxic traits. I'm attracted to women that need help. And that puts me in a bad place. But learning codependency and learning what this issue is. Because I always felt weird. Outside of just like the, the mental issues, like I still, I felt weird in relationships. Like I was afraid to like speak up sometimes. I felt uncomfortable. And then by the time I spoke up, it's like I'm fucking pissed. And that's still not fair to the other person either. Because maybe if I communicated better, maybe it wouldn't even got to that point. And I ain't never been abusive, put my hands on nobody. But I might cut your ass out. Not like saying, you know, bitch or nothing like that. But there's, there's other ways to be mean. And I'm going to tell you the realest way to be mean that, that most of the time that I've done in the past is tell the fucking truth. Because a lot of times when you love people, you see their flaws. And you let that shit slide. Because you love them. But you push my motherfucking buttons. We might put a spotlight on all that shit. But that's still not right. That's tick for tack. And that's not cool. So as I learned to love myself, and I learned boundaries. Oh my God. This word will change your life. Boundaries. If you look up two words. Codependency. And boundaries. If you look these words up. I promise you. And study them. They will change your life. They will change your life. And I'm going to tell you the scariest thing that I found out. That when you deal with codependency. You draw unconsciously to you narcissistic personalities. So you're a constant giver and you're giving because you need that validation. You know who you draw? Takers. People that come to take. People that come to drain. People that say they love you, but their actions don't add up. But I don't even blame them. Because all the study that, studying that I've done, a narcissist doesn't know that they're a narcissist. And a lot of times, sometimes with some of these mental issues, they don't have the, the mental strength to face themselves. They do a lot of things to hide from themselves. They want to be high and drunk all the time. They want to stay busy with confusion all the time and negativity all the time. Because the last thing they want to do is face themselves. And I feel like at the end of the day... Facing yourself is the best thing you can ever do. Facing yourself is the best thing you can ever do. 
it doesn't matter who you talk to about it. Talk to you about it because that's where the growth starts. It's saying, you know what? These relationships ain't working. Maybe it's my fault. It is my fault. I didn't take time to heal. I didn't take time to figure out what was going on with me. I'm jumping in relationships with people, but I have some issues I need to work out. I'm in places where I'm being mistreated, but I allow myself to be mistreated because I didn't take time to love myself and figure me out first. So let's not ever be a victim because the door is always there. If you choose to stay, you can't be a victim. You can't be a victim. If a motherfucker is walking towards you going like this and you just like, and you get punched in your face, you can't be like, I can't believe they punched me in the face. How the fuck did you put your face there? I had to ask myself, why the fuck did I put my face there? Why am I a punching bag? Why don't I have value? Why do I need validation from other people? Take some time. Figure that shit out. Break the cycle. Because if you start looking through your relationships, you'll start seeing you are attracting the same personalities. You are going through the same situations with different people to the point where it's your fault. It's your fault. Because if you keep going through the same shit, at some point you don't notice. Damn, this is similar. We just got to do better. And we can't beat that. And one thing I learned too, you can't beat yourself up. You cannot beat yourself up. Nah. The, the world outside is hard enough. It's hard enough out there. And then with all the shit we going with Corona and pandemic and niggas breathing on you and motherfuckers dying. Every time you turn around, niggas sneeze on you, nigga gone, gone them all. This ain't the time to beat yourself up. This is the time to say, you know what? These stressful situations, <coughs> these stressful situations, it's too much. I need to figure out a way to be peaceful and be happy. And figure out a way to let this shit go. Self-love. Self-love. And for you. So no matter how hard it is, it's for you. If you was going to grind it out, if you was going to thug it out for anybody, let it be for you. For real. Let it be for you. So take time. Take time to analyze your history. Take time to analyze. If you're single right now, you came out of a bad relationship, take some time and like analyze what just happened and what boundaries weren't set? Because one thing I, I realize about boundaries is it's not my job to make you happy. It's not even my job to fix your problems. Venting is cool, but let's not talk about the same shit all the fucking time. That shit going to get annoying. But venting is cool. I need to vent sometime. I'm not venting the same every day about the same shit, though. At some point, it gets repetitive and you start to think like, okay. This seems self-inflicted. So you got to have boundaries. It's not my job to make you happy. It's not my job to fix your problems. Nah. I need to be happy. I need to be happy. You need to be happy. We come together and we're both happy. It's not my job. When a motherfucker say some shit like, they don't make me happy or I need a man to... No, if you need something, you need to take a minute. You need to go sit on the bench. Get out the game for a second. Sit on the bench. Look at the playbook. Because somewhere you're fucking up. You're supposed to pass the ball. You're not dribbling right. Something. You're fucking up somewhere. Speak to a coach. Those are therapists. You know what I mean? That's the only way to win, homie. It's the only way to win. You got to study the game book and see where you're fucking up. So peace, family. We here on this journey. So keep moving forward.